Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. It's better than no light at all, I suppose, but not by a huge amount. And I can just cut strips along the front of the barns along here, like this. And that's going to make it look all neat and tidy. The flowers won't be cut, and the bushes won't be cut, so it's not quite what I was after, but uh, it's, it's going to be better than nothing. And we'll also just tidy up around the tank over here a little bit. There. I could actually do with tidying closer to the tank. I can't get right into this tank. That's not going to happen by the look of it. But I can get in tight to the barn here, like that. I can just run... No, I, I can't even get that bit. Right, this, this is something that really irritates me whenever I try and do mowing uh, like uh, around the edges, is you can't get right into the very edges. So you have something like this, and it doesn't... Unless you've got it set so that it's cutting a width that's quite a bit wider than the actual machine itself, you do end up leaving a little bit behind. It's like a little tiny strip down there. And I'm right up against the concrete here, and I can't do anything about that. I can't get in there any tighter. So that's going to be it for us. That's all the mowing that we can do on that bit. I can go up here, and I can just grab there a little bit tighter, like that. Yeah, that's, that's better. That's, that's looking a bit neater. And along here. But there's little tiny bits that's left behind, isn't there? And those bits, they they, gener they do quite irritate me, those little bits that's left behind. I don't like seeing them everywhere, but there isn't a lot that we can do about it. There's a bit there. There's another bit there. But overall, it's looking better. Overall, that is looking better than what it once was. I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to do a little tiny bit... Along there, just to fill up the hopper to 100%. It's only got to be one length along here. There we go. Right, that's that's all full now. Turn you off. Actually, it unfolds you. I'm only going to do the one. That fertilizer up there, that should be just about done now. So we can bring that tractor down and we can set it going in the other field. This one over here, you can be brought round there and start unloading. So there's another three hundred dollars all finished and you are now finished. Excellent. Right. As I'm down this end of the field, I will simply drive down this hill and we'll go straight into the field down there and we can start spreading this one. And this is the bit this is the drawback with this Fiat compared to many other tractors. Is the 25 kilometers an hour top speed that it's got. It's painfully slow. So it means whilst it does do just fine working in the field and it's got a pretty reasonable horsepower as well. I think, well, this one's like 150 horsepower, isn't it? Uh, I need to go here to have a look at that. Uh, small tractors right there. It is. It's 150 horsepower. So it's, it is a powerful tractor. It's got a lot of oomph to it. It's got quite a few horses packed in beneath the bonnet there. The problem lies in the speed that it does between one field and the next. You know, it, it'll go and do the job enthusiastically enough, but it always seems a bit reluctant to go from one job to starting the next job. That's where it sort of lets itself down. Uh, bring you in here like this, and... Away you go. Now, of course, we've got these bits down here. So I want to see what it's going to do when it gets down there. Is it going to go to the end of the field or not? If we do that... Ooh, no. Do that there. Right. Yeah, see, it, it, it's gone over the rest of it, all right. It's whether it goes right down to the end of the field. I don't know if he's going to. Are you going to, are you going to get right down to the end of the field there, mate? I'm hoping you will. I'm just looking at the cab here. and Have a look at that. I've driven many tractors like this. Um, there was a stage where they had lots of, like, gear levers there on the side. You had no room in the cab whatsoever. But there was a stage where they had a whole load of gear levers. Like, originally, all the gears used to be in between your feet down there. That's where they'd stick everything. Uh, but then they changed it. Like, you had everything there in between your legs. Uh, but then... 
we went through a stage with all the gears being here on the side and some of them were on long gear sticks there over in the corner you had to reach forward quite a bit in front of the brake pedal to get your gears um and then they moved them over to here but way down and so you had long levers and everything was beside you but it was like down quite a long way um making it a little bit more difficult to get to uh looking around here um then of course like there's a lever on that side as well um there was a time also where you had the gear lever over on that side in some makes of model international tractors had that you had a gear lever on your left hand side it was very weird driving a tractor with a gear lever on the left hand side now here in the uk tractors have uh, this one though this one looks like it's gear looking at that i can see the stickers there it looks like the gear lever is actually on the dashboard underneath there because that looks like it's all the draft stuff rather than gear levers. So that would put that up there. Yeah, that, that is it. One, two, three, four on the lever. On Wow, okay, that's got the gears up on the dashboard up there. I've not seen that before, actually. That's not something I've seen. I'm used to seeing them either down there or over there. International tractors, there was a couple of them that I've driven that had the gears over there down that side. And it's very weird for a tractor. I live in the UK, so all our cars, because they're right-hand drive, the gear lever is on your left-hand side. So it's not something that I can't do. I'm quite used to driving a car. Um, but it is odd in a tractor when you spend all your time looking over this shoulder when you're doing your work to have the gears over here. Um, but that is quite unusual. I, that's the only tractor that I can remember that I've seen with the gear levers over there. Um, usually they were all sort of wedged in together here. Now, of course, most tractors have this side all filled in, or they have it on a console on the arm of the seat itself. Um, so it sort of joggles up and down with the driver along with everything else. Um, but yeah, it's, it's carefully laid out for absolute maximum comfort for the driver and comfort for the driver is now something that takes a much higher priority than it ever used to and that's something that i think is really really good i, I really like that it takes such such a high priority now for um tractor manufacture the driver comfort is considered to be a very important thing what are you doing you look like you're slowing down. Is it slowing down? Okay, I've... I know why it did that. It was because of this little weird bit down here. Alright, I've never seen it quite acting like that before, but um, at least we know why it did it. Uh, but yeah, it was... Um, what was I saying? Driver comfort. It, you know, you, driver was there and they, they did sort of pay a little bit of attention to comfort. But now they sort of appreciate just how many hours a driver is going to be sat in the machine. And there is a lot of work and a lot of research goes into the best way to keep the driver comfortable. Because... It's realized a lot more now that the more comfortable the driver is, the more productive he's going to be. And that's... I'm, I'm quite pleased about that. I mean, yeah, I, admittedly, I, I would have been more pleased if they'd sort of started on this campaign and crusade of maximum driver comfort 25 years ago or 30 years ago so that I could have benefited from it a little bit more. Don't be wrong, I, I had my sh fair share of very comfortable tractors to drive, but I've when you compare those with the ones that I have driven just or just seen being driven uh, in more recent years, I realize that I didn't quite get to take full advantage of the driver comfort drive that is now so prevalent and i do feel i missed out a little bit i i, I really do like occasionally i um will be able to see a new machine and just sit myself down in the new machine and really take a look at what it is and and how comfortable it is like Looking at new telehandlers and the controls for new telehandlers compared to how they used to be. My goodness me. 
Um, I got a slight problem with my shoulder. If I use the old telehandlers with the bigger levers too much, my shoulder develops a deep, very, very sort of nasty ache. Well, with, right inside my shoulder. And it's the more I use a telehandler with the, like the older levers where you're having to reach a little bit, the worse that ache gets until it becomes quite a uh, crippling pain these days. Um, and see, I don't need to do that anymore. I can just do this. And just jump here to my mower. Um, but yeah, it that pain that I had, I'm not... Don't tell me if I am and I'm not tired. Uh, it's it's no longer um, something that would have developed. If, if the maximum driver comfort that they're so now focused on had been... They'd started working on this 30 years ago... Uh, I wouldn't have that issue, the whole shoulder pain. That's come about from levers on machines that I used to drive because, like, I've driven telehandlers where the levers were here. I've driven telehandlers where you had to have your arm stretched out straight to hold on to the lever over up there somewhere. And that was absolutely awful. Like, it, it really was. You, you knew when you were driving that one and you wouldn't be able to bend your arm properly for um like well it, it it just it would slowly get worse as you spent hours and hours driving it thankfully i've only ever seen one that was like that but it was still pretty poor that they'd even had one like that and you sort of looked at it and you thought who was the idiot that actually designed that you you could tell the person who designed where the lever went had never actually sat in the machine and driven one himself you knew that that had never happened. Well, either that or they just bore a grudge against the world for no particular reason and wanted other people to suffer along with them. Uh, two and a half thousand. I honestly thought it was going to go up quite a bit more than that. The transport company is to six. And that's 1144. I'm still going to take it up to the grain elevator. I think we will still go up to the grain elevator. Um, slight reduction. Like I would prefer if we had an extra 200 on that. Or actually just 150 more because 3,000 is about the maximum you can get. Uh, that being said, I'm reasonably happy to go with that. You know, it's a slight down payment on what we could have got. And that's not too bad either considering that uh, 1250 is about maximum. So that's within our 10% that one is. So we, we can go with that one and that one there. You're 1986 here. What did we get for oats? We had 2,000... 2,030 is the maximum, and that's still going up. If we'd waited a bit, we could have done better with the oats. Oh, well. Let's get ourselves all the way on up to the central grain elevator. Yes, we could get a better price if we went down to the transport company, but quite frankly, I don't think it's worth it. It's $100 per thousand liters and we've only got seven and a half thousand liters here anyway so it's only going to get us an extra 750 um yeah possibly i could go and put these beans back but it's going to be a little while actually is it going to be a little while well it's, it's going to be a couple of seasons before we'd be ready to be getting any beans so i'm thinking we stick with what we're doing we go with this one, and we get this sold, and then as soon as we've sold this, we can start just fast-forwarding time a little tiny bit, and hopefully we will be able to start on the harvest. And then we've got to keep an eye on the canola prices. I was considering doing some missions, because that was something that we didn't have in FS13, and, you know, it was, it was quite a nice thing. Uh, well, we did have missions. We had these mowing missions, didn't we? Um, but, you know, this, this, the whole mission thing that we've got now uh, is not something that we had at all. And so I was considering doing some of that, you know, and earn an extra little bit of money. Because that was something that quite a few people used to talk about in forums and that uh, back during FS13 uh, was, you know, how awesome would that be? How, how brilliant would it be if we could have something like that to just 
add to the game and, and add to the different things that we can do. But anyway, we got 22,700 euros right there, which means that we're now on 45,000. We've got a little tiny bit of canola left and a little bit of wheat left and tiny bit of corn left over there. Uh, field 14 will be the next field that I want to buy. At least that's what I'm thinking. I want, you know, that one right there, field 14, is 199,000. Possibly I'd go with that one up there. That's 153,000 so that we get the two long fields over here before we even go for field 14. That is definitely a possibility. Uh, but probably I... I, I Probably I won't. I'd like to go for field 14. I'd like to have the one down there. I think that would be better for us. But there's no guarantee that I'm going to go and do that. I'm, I'm not quite sure at the moment. But anyway, I know what I do want to do, and that is start fast-forwarding time so that we can push that towards our harvest starting. Now, with $45,000, 45,000 euros, we've got a combine there already. Would I have enough to go and sell the combine that I've got and buy another one? Is This is what I'm wondering. Is that 45 grand and the combine that we've got already, selling that one, is that going to be a total that is enough for us to afford a brand shiny new combine? I think it would be very, very awesome if we could. Um, I don't know at the moment. Just thinking we could... You know, we got some very rough patches here on our road, haven't we? It's the, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of that in a minute because I am able to do that. So I'm going to go into here and we're going to go to landscaping like this. And we got a rough spot right here that needs to be just smoothed out. So I'm going to come down through like that. And I'm just using the smoothing tool. I'm not doing anything else. I have no plans to do anything else. I'm just going to use the smoothing tool a little bit on the road just to actually, you know, smooth it. There, like that. I know I'm pulling back on the grass a little bit that's in the way, but that is fine. Uh, there is a piece of weed there that was part way back through that I'd also like to do something to. Terrain cannot be modified here. Why can't the terrain be modified here? It can over this side. It can... Oh. What? Uh... Alright. I don't know why that can't be modified in there. There's, there's something going on here. Is this because of what map was used underneath this? Right, the, we, we do have options though, don't we? I've got, uh, it's not in there. I want to click there. Global company. If I go to the global company, left control G like this. you got the global company. You go to the basic settings, horse helper, active, 300 per show object info activate extended placeable there right we'll do that because what that will do is that will override where you can place things down now, i don't always want that one active but it is useful for like this right here so now i can just go along here and i can use my leveling function and just smooth that down. I don't want to get close to the crop over here. That's as close as I want to get, really, over there. I want mostly to do it over on this side. There, we've got just a couple of little bits there where the terrain is slightly uneven. I don't want to get too close to that road. Uh, not the road, to the field. I'll just bring that up through there. Right, I think that smoothed that out now. It's just, it was just ever so slightly there. Yeah, it's, it is just, it's making some slight adjustments just there. I can just see the road moving a little tiny bit. It's only got to move a bit. It's just, it's just to smooth out that little rough patch as I went through there. 
Just making everything bounce around. Right, okay, we've done that bit. Let's jump back into you. Start the engine up, and let's keep going. I don't know if there are any more bits like that, but it, it, it didn't take very much money to go and do that. Oh, and there's another rough bit that I just went over just there. So I'm going to also patch that bit. So I want to scroll down over here. There was... The, there's a bit... That's not so bad up through there. If I just put the smoothing function on it. But yeah, there, there was a little bit just here. And there's another little bit just here. There. Just, just look at the way the road is moving ever so slightly. It's not much. It's only subtle. But it's enough to put like a little bit of a bump when you're traveling. Now, the other, there was another bit. And this wasn't a rough patch. But what it was... Is right there. That road just there has got. Now I can't. I you can't like put the. You can't put it right over. So what you need to do is you need to go big like that, and then use the leveling function like that. And I know I've just gone and got rid of a whole patch of stuff down there, which I don't really like. But it has also gotten rid of the weed that was underneath the road. So now what I can do is we can switch back over to here if I press. X right there that switches over to the ground type so we've got dirt I got leaves and there I've got grass with grass there I've got grass with these weeds like that and let's spin round do a little bit more of this uh, this one is those weeds right there I like these and I'm going to make that a bit smaller, like that. And I'm going to add in a couple of little patches of thistles. Tab again, and we'll put in some... I think these are poppies that we're putting in here. Like that. Tab again, and... That's grass. And then I got, like, the odd shrub coming through here as well. Tab again makes a medium shrub like that. Tab again this does big shrubs. So I'll put in a couple of big shrubs like that. There we go. Right, I've fixed that and it's gotten it off the road. That's all I wanted, wanted to do in there. You, we can drive back down to the yard. There's another step right there under, underneath where I was. You know, that bit doesn't actually matter. Because we're not, we're not going through there. We won't be going through that bit very fast. So I'm, I'm quite happy for that to go a little bit slower. Let's speed up time again. The field over there... That's now been harvested. Our field right here goes right out to the edge of the road there. I don't know what it's going to be like once we start doing the combining. We're going to want... I'm just wondering if we want this tractor on the cult on this one. Because we're going to want the cultivator next. Uh, actually, what are we going to want next? After this crop, we're planting sunflowers. So we need a planter. That one over there is not able to do sunflowers. So we're going to need planters to be able to do this. And I don't know what we've got at the moment. Let's go in here. Uh, planters in there. We've got like you've got. We got like this little Amazon one right here, and we've also got the Caverna. And that's a 4.5. That's a three meter. I quite like the idea of having a 4.5 meter one here. This does seed and fertilizer. So does that one. They all do. Actually, no, that one just does seed. That one does fertilizer, if you add that one onto the front of it. Um, but this one here, just it just sits on the back. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that we go with that one right there, the Covernant. 29,000. It requires 70 horsepower to pull it, and there's a 4.5 meter wide spread on it. 29,000, so I can only buy one of them. That one there is 6 meters. That could go on our bigger tractor. And then it also has the option for that on the front. So, as I can only get one, maybe we will go with the Lemkin this time. Maybe it would be better to do that. Let's just come out of there a second and slow time down to one time speed now that our harvest is ready. And, yeah, I'm just going to leave you there for a second. So, I got 40... Wait a minute, I need to buy this. I need to buy the planter before I do anything else. So... I, it's it's got to be one of those. I'm not going for this bigger one over here. And I'm looking down through. There's nothing here that tickles my fancy in any way. Uh, 
possibly you. You you require 180 horsepower this Kvernland one right here. Um, but you are 70 grand, so you're a little bit out of my price range. So <laughs> no, we won't be getting that one. So it's either going to be this one, which is 34,000, or this one, which is 29,000. I can only afford one of these drills, whichever one I get. So even if I go, like, I can't get two of these, which is kind of what I was wanting to go for. So I'm thinking then this would be the better option. Six meter one will get stuff done faster. It's only a little bit more expensive to get this one. So if I buy that bad boy right there, and I go and buy that bad boy right there, like that, I've got that ready. The combine is going to have to wait. I, I don't have the money for upgrading any combines at the moment. If we go and have a look at our harvesters in here, uh, we're sort of... You know, something along these lines would be what we're looking at. But that's 145,000. I'm not using the John Deere mod that I've used in the Boulder Canyon series. And then we've got these two over here, which both are improvements. But again, we don't, we just don't have the, I, I just don't have the money for them. So what we're going to have to hope is that we can sell the canola after the harvest and right now the central grain elevator is 2300 wow hang on the absolute best price that i had seen on canola up until now was 2198 right now at central grain elevator they're offering 2316 beans over here have already gone higher than the the soybeans are higher than any that we've seen previously at 2979 they will go up to 3000 we know but we've just never personally seen it and they're still climbing uh beans don't really matter but it's just there but yeah the central grain elevator price at 2300 we're looking at selling this off the field we are looking at selling this off the field which means that we should be able to get a very nice price for our canola a very very nice price indeed and we should then have the money to upgrade the combine next time round i want to go control h on here i want that to be the active and i want this to go round you'll go round the field a few times first so i'll bring you into this corner like this and we will start you up like that and you are away. So we have three o'clock in the afternoon. It's going to take a while to get through this field. But I'm confident that we can do it in a reasonable amount of time. We're going to get a reasonable yield as well. The tank is already pushing for 10% full. Just going across this bottom end. There we go. 10% full across this bottom end. 11% full. That's not bad. And the corner of the field is absolutely fine on there. I don't know what the combine is doing on that bit, but it's working. It's fine. It's going through. Something that I've always wanted to see, and you can't, you, you don't see it, but it's something that I have always wanted to see, and that is the option to leave stuff behind as a straw swath now you do have that option with wheat and barley and now oats but you don't have that option with like soybeans or... i think we've relived enough glory days just for a moment we're gonna take a breather we're gonna have a little bite to eat and then we can get back to it nice and refreshed and relive a few more glory days. There should be some names coming up right now that you can have a look at. It's names of people who are in the Great Book of Names, people who have supported this channel. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.